Hello, I'm Joe McCarthy at Catchpoint, and in this video, I'll demonstrate our Network Insights suite of tools that provide the network visibility required to monitor and troubleshoot today's complex network infrastructures. Let's start off with DNS. In this scenario, the user's responsibility is for monitoring the content delivery network, sometimes referred to as the CDN, for North America. In my main dashboard, I can quickly see that out of the four CDN servers, CDN1 is showing poor performance along with some downtime. To investigate CDN1 in more depth, I'll launch into SmartBoard. So I can see that CDN1 is showing some downtime, and the overall CDN tests are taking over 380 milliseconds, with a good chunk of that time coming from DNS lookups, as opposed to wait time which is the CDN server response time, which is looking OK, and the connect time, which would identify a possible network issue. But it too is looking good. So this is looking more and more like it's a DNS specific issue. Armed with that information, I know where to focus my attention. So I'll select DNS in the dashboard. So now all metrics in this dashboard will be DNS specific. So now that I'm focused on DNS traffic, as designated by the DNS in this tab, I can scroll through the screen to get more information about DNS and in my environment. I can see how each of the cities are working, IP addresses, even ISPs. So if I want to filter worst to best, simply click on DNS metric that shows best to worst, click on it again, and I'm showing Honolulu is showing the largest DNS uh, time frame. Now keep in mind this is averaged material, averaged metrics, so that's what this line chart is showing. I want to see specific transactions for each DNS query. So to do that, I can simply select scatter plot. This view shows every DNS lookup, so I can see any outliers and get a true sense of how things are performing. I can clearly see that there are many DNS lookups taking between two and six seconds to complete. That's not very good. And because I know that the network connection time and CDN servers are performing fine, it does look like it's a regional DNS issue. So my next move is I want to look at the response times from my DNS servers. In this view, I'm showing specifically my DNS servers and any outliers that are happening. So I can see one of the servers is taking 1.5 seconds, another 800 milliseconds, right on up to 1.7 seconds. I'm even seeing where most of the transactions are taking between like 5 milliseconds up to about, about 200 milliseconds. So certainly something isn't performing as it should. To help identify which DNS servers are the problems, I can add another filter by simply going into this tab and click. I can do it by city, country, continent. I want to go by IP. I want to know the specific IP address. So I'll add that in. It's pretty clear that I have two DNS servers that are showing some pretty high response times. And when I put my cursor over those two, the 184.26, it highlights just those transactions that have happened, the DNS lookups, so I can see where they're happening at. When I go down to the next one, the purple, I can see exactly where they're at. So that's how I can help identify where do I need to focus my attention. From here I want to dive deeper into each of these outliers. So I'll just simply put my cursor over the, the worst one, and I can see it's coming from Washington DC. From here I can go down to the raw data measurement to dive in deeper to find out what's really going on. I've selected level 1, which displays the top level domain information for this DNS server that services our CDN. And I can verify it's not an issue at this level, as response times look very good. But when I select level 2, I see that when you hit this particular DNS server, this is where the latency occurred. So I've narrowed the CDN performance issue down to two DNS servers that are causing the problems. No need to contact the network folks or our CDN providers. With Catchpoint Solutions, I was able to quickly identify degrading performance within a CDN, determine the cause was a local DNS issue, avoid wasting time contacting the network team or CDN providers, and get our CDN back up to speed fast. End user experience preserved. Next up, let's look at our BGP functionality. In this scenario, the user's responsibility is to monitor the BGP routing performance and reachability of all the corporation's points of presence. The BGP overview dashboard shows the status of all my prefixes, and we can display up to 500 prefixes. 
Below this is the location view of those prefixes, so you can geographically see the status from a global perspective. To investigate any of these prefixes, I simply need to select one and it takes me to Catchpoint's SmartBoard. SmartBoard provides insights into many different metrics, giving you multiple perspectives when troubleshooting, all from one view. Notice at the bottom of the screen, Catchpoint differentiates itself by utilizing three different sources to gather BGP route information. First is route views, which is used by most monitoring solutions today. This only provides BGP updates in 15 minute intervals. RIPE RIS updates within about five minutes. And because Catchpoint can leverage its backbone nodes deployed globally, we receive real time BGP information, which is a huge differentiator. Looking at the smart board view, I can move the time frame bar to wherever I need to to investigate deeper. And once I place my bar where I need to, let it go, all the metrics update to view just that specific information. SmartBoard also provides powerful filtering mechanisms so you can quickly navigate to where the issue or issues are occurring. The three pink bars represent the route withdrawals seen in the metrics below. Starting from the left, you can see I can filter by peer, continent, country, registry, even collector. I'll stick with peer because I know I want to find out which peer is causing my issues. When I go to withdrawals, since I know I have three of them, simply select it, select it again, and it bubbles up worst to best. So now I can see FiberStream is where I'm having my issues. As I can see, I have three withdrawals and availability is zero. Since FiberStream is the only peer showing route withdrawals, I can further filter specifically on FiberStream by selecting it and hitting apply. Now all the metrics are focused specifically to FiberStream. Going across this view, I can see any neighbors. And when I select it, I can see that SAP peers with itself. So we'll just see SAP to SAP. In the answer section, this shows the prefixes that I've targeted. This is under the prefix section. So you can see I targeted a .88 21 and it answered with a .8821. Now, sometimes you may target a specific prefix such as a slash 24, but the route table is picking up an aggregate route of a slash 21. So at times you may get a different response than what you're expecting. So now I wanna move down to the route view, which is at the bottom of the screen. And here's where we can filter by different metrics. Here it is by continent, country, registry, collector. I wanna do by peer, since we know FiberStream is the culprit. A unique feature about this view is you can adjust the perspective of the traffic flow. By clicking on the origin box, you can change how the view is displayed. Here I'm showing peer on the left, so I can see FiberStream is on the left, with the origin address on the right. If I simply click on the origin box, it flips it. So now the origin is on the left with the peer on the right. So depending on what you're trying to solve or view, you've got options. I'll go back to having the peer on the left. Another great feature within this view is you can make it more granular. So from the peer direction, I'll grab this dot and just slide it to the right. And as you can see, it gets more and more granular as I go to the right, showing the full path. You can also, I'll slide this back, do it from the origin side. So as I slide this to the left, it builds basically the same view, but it shows you the full path. So again, you have options on how you want to view this specific route. So looking at this route, starting from the fiber stream side, when I put my cursor over it, you can see 0% availability and there are three failures throughout this route. And as I can see, as I go across, when I get to the hurricane ISP, the route flipped for some reason. So it went from Emirates Telecommunications and it flipped to orange. Now, anytime you see a dotted red line, that signifies a withdrawn route. So for some reason, it flipped from Emirates to orange, and now orange is showing a stable route because it's signified by a solid red line. So a solid red line is stable. Anytime you see a dotted red line, that's a withdrawn route. And you can see that SAP is ingesting from two different paths into their endpoint, and each one has a different ASN number. So this one ends in 928, and the one below ends in 181. So as a network ops person, I can conclude that there's a problem with the fiber stream as they were isolated and having some route flap that was causing us to move between the orange and Emirates ISPs. 
and an issue bouncing the traffic between two of our SAP providers. Now these incidents could have been a result of route flap on the FiberStream side, or possibly traffic bouncing between the SAP providers. Perhaps you're just validating the effects of a plant configuration change or performing route maintenance. Having a view that provides hop-by-hop -hop granularity and shows the effects of change in real time is priceless. With Catchpoint Solutions, I was able to quickly identify a BGP routing issue, determine the source of the problem, pinpoint the exact cause that created the BGP routing issue, the ability to validate the effects of planned route changes, and most importantly, get the end user's performance back in short order. Problem solved. Moving on to trace route. In this scenario, the user's responsibility is to monitor the performance and reachability of all the corporation's points of presence located around the globe. From this main view, I can see the status of these locations and understand where do I need to focus my attention. I can see that there are some sporadic outages, but China is certainly experiencing the most downtime, so this is where I'll focus. To view all the company's points of presence in China, I can simply select the China tile and I'm taken to SmartBoard, looking only at the China POPs. SmartBoard is an interactive dashboard that quickly identifies and troubleshoots performance issues affecting the users, all on a single dashboard. Using SmartBoard, I can select a specific time of interest so I can move my time bar to where I really want to focus in on and let it go. It then updates all the metrics specific to this time frame. To view the traffic flows, I've selected the IP network view. This utilizes Traceroute to plot out the different traffic patterns that each POP uses. When looking at this view, the blue dots on the left are all the catchpoint monitoring locations. And when I hover over one, it will display the overall packet loss and all the hops taken in their status all the way to the destination IP address. This trace route view shows me precisely which hops are causing the packet loss. So for IP address 117, 161, 75, 123, I can say I have two providers that are having issues identified by the yellow dots. Hovering over these dots, I can get specific information about each of these POPs. So when I go to the top one, I can see its IP address, which is 218, 105, 2.113, getting 50% packet loss I can also see it's come from China Unicom. I go to the second one, hover over that. Its IP is 218.105.2.165. Again, 50% packet loss, and it too is coming from China Unicom. And when I hover over the destination IP, I can see I also have a test point in Beijing, China, and it's using provider Guangdong Mobile Communications, and its IP address is 221.183.39.42, and it too is showing 50% packet loss. So thanks to Catchpoint SmartBoard and its traceroute capabilities, I was able to identify which providers in China are causing the issues and resolve these issues quickly, restoring a positive end user experience. With Catchpoint Solutions, I was able to quickly identify locations experiencing degrading service, determine the exact cause of the issues, avoid the war room and any finger pointing, and get end users' performance back in short order. Problem solved. And to finish up with endpoint monitoring. In this use case, the network ops team is monitoring the corporate SaaS applications. It notices that Concur application is having issues in their Sydney, Australia office. From this view, I can launch directly into SmartBoard for deeper investigation. SmartBoard is an interactive dashboard that quickly identifies and troubleshoots performance issues affecting the users, all from a single dashboard. As I scroll down within SmartBoard, I get onto Scatterplot, which shows every transaction or every login that's happening for Concur. And I can see I have two micro outages. These outages are happening in the Sydney office, which we, which we have identified. This one happens at 6.28 in the evening. In the next one, again, the Sydney office at 6.58, so less than 30 minutes apart. So it is definitely a micro outage going on in the Sydney office. From here, I can launch into the waterfall view, 
which give me specifics about this issue. I can immediately see that we're having an internal server error coming from our Concur servers. And as I scroll down and look at the film strip, I can see the actual login process. It goes through Okta's single sign-on process. And then when it gets to this point, this is where we're seeing the internal server errors. The power of the waterfall chart is it shows each step of the login process so I can see where things failed. So as you look, you can see coming through servicenow.okta.com, authorization is working fine. It's when the handoff goes to concursolutions.com is where I see the major problem. This is where the four second wait time happens. If I put my cursor over this actual file, you can see the sign-in process has failed. And when I click on it, I now see what the customers are seeing. So the waterfall chart provides the actual path and file that is failing. I understand which host is causing the problem in its actual IP address. So the waterfall chart provides all the information I need to identify where I need to attack this problem. So by leveraging Catchpoint's enterprise nodes, which are deployed within the enterprise network, and provide bi-directional detection of performance problems and degraded employee experiences, combine this with Catchpoint's endpoint monitoring, which reaches all the way into the employee's device, collecting and analyzing from the employee's browser and workstation, eliminating what is often the final visibility gap. Both provide the ability to run continuous trace routes to collect and analyze network data, you have a complete view of all your on-prem and hosted SaaS applications. With Catchpoint Solutions, I was able to quickly identify a hosted SaaS application issue, determine the source of the problem, pinpoint the exact cause that created the SaaS login issues, get the end user's performance back in short order, break through the SaaS visibility gap with Catchpoint. Thanks for watching. For more information on Catchpoint's Network Insights suite of tools, please visit the link provided.